Hallelujah. First time visitors, we are sorry, we do that all the time. If you're a first time visitor, wait, wait. If you're a first time visitor. Come on, hug them. Hug them. You might see these things and wonder why, but that's who we are. You're welcome. And I know you're going to come again. I pray it. Bishop. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. I bring greetings to you from India and from the United States of America. Hallelujah. We are warmly welcome to come and visit us in, in America as well as in India. Amen. All right. And then today is a very special day. I'm very grateful to Apostle for giving us this privilege to come and serve you this evening. I have with me... Uh, uh, Bishop Courtney Macbeth, who is serving the Lord for the past 26 years, developed a multiple thousand member church in Norfolk, Virginia. And he and his dear wife, Pastor Janine Macbeth, serving the Lord, raising uh, 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 thousands of people for the glory of God, turning or leading people to righteousness leading people to receive Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord. And also they are, they are so blessed to, to rub shoulders with uh, great men like uh, John Maxwell and uh, T.D. Jakes, and then God is using them mightily. And I'm uh, so privileged to know them personally. Both, are, both of them are uh, preaching machines. They are powerful men and women of God. Hallelujah. And then, uh, you know, we are looking forward to having you to come to Norfolk, Virginia and visit us there. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, at this time, uh, I, I want to both Bishop Macbeth and Pastor Janine Macbeth to come to the platform. And I know the time is limited, but yet I request the Mama Macbeth to pray for us and then... Uh, Bishop Matt will take over and break the word of God for us. Please give us a welcome. Please stand on your feet and welcome Bishop Courtney Macbeth and Pastor Janine Macbeth. Hallelujah. Let's make manifest his glory in the house. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is so good to be with you. We bring love from USA. We bring love from Norfolk, Virginia. We bring a lot of love to all of you. We're so grateful that you have us come to be with you tonight. We love your pastor. Give God a praise for your pastor. A young man who has a passion and a love for the things of God. And so we know because he loves God, we know you love God. Amen. Well, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you that you have been with us all day long. Now, Father, as we sit in the presence of God, for surely we are in the presence of God. And so, Father, as we sit in your presence, we ask tonight that you would speak to us afresh. Open up our understanding. Change the way we see you. Cause us to see you in a new way tonight. Open up our hearts to receive your word. And cause us, oh God, to be touched by you tonight. So that not only will we be touched, but that we will take this world, this word to the world and change the world. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your blessings in Jesus' wonderful name. Come on, shout unto the Lord and give him praise. Praise the Lord. It is a privilege to be with you tonight. Do you all mind standing just one or two more minutes? I want you to forgive me that I don't know my own language. I was taken from my own country 
before I had a chance to learn my own language. I was taken from my own country before I had a chance to fully even take in all of my culture. But I want to tell you tonight that they may have robbed me of my language, they may have robbed me of my culture, but they cannot rob me, rob me of my love for Africa. I still have my skin, I still have my hair, and I still have my dance. I wish you would help me raise up a mighty praise for our God. God, we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. You are mighty. We bless you. You are great. We praise you. You're our Father and we magnify you. You are God and we worship you. Come on, lift those hands up like worshipers and tell God how much you love him tonight. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you, Lord, that as life began in Africa, that revival is coming from Africa. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who represent what you're doing in the earth, that you're manifesting your glory, that you're manifesting your spirit, that you're manifesting your power. Demons are being cast out and the sick are healed and the lame walk and the bound are set free and new life is coming out of us. Thank you that life is inside of us. You said that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We praise you for this life. Even though the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy, we declare tonight that the devil is under our feet. We declare tonight that victory belongs to us. We declare tonight that the Spirit of God lives inside us. We declare tonight that the enemy will not win. We are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. And we praise You for the victory. We thank You tonight that by faith we lay hold to that that we cannot see. We may not hear it, see it, touch it, taste it, or smell it. But by faith we have it. The impossible belongs to us by the grace of God. And for this, Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you allow me to do a favor? Can I take a picture of you to send back to your brothers and sisters? Because they need to see what they need to see you. They need to see that you look just like them. I see at least a hundred people that go to my church. Oh, good. Wait, act like you're happy. I don't want them to see you sad. Come on, wave at those Americans that couldn't come to their home tonight. Thank you. Now would you just hug somebody, shake somebody's hand before you sit down, and tell them that the life of God is inside you. The life of God is inside you. Apostle, how much time do I have? No, 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 no. That's not smart. Remember, I'm not an American. I'm an African. You can't tell me I have as long as I want. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right, I want to read to you from 1 Samuel 30. I don't have a lot of time. Isn't my wife beautiful? African men have good taste in women. <laughs> and you know she's African too because we have five kids. And in America, that's a lot of children. First Samuel 30, I want to read it to you. I won't read it all, but I'll read most of it to you. And then I want to tell you a story. And then I want you to recognize tonight that God is at work in your life. And out of places of deep pressure, God takes something out of you that is valuable. And reveals it and makes it manifest to the world that you live in. 
I want you to understand tonight that we as a people, as Africans and particularly Ugandans, that we as a people, as East Africans, West Africans, that we as a people have within us, like our land, we have in us rich treasure. Our land is full of treasure. Our land is full of gold and aluminum and silver and oil and rubber. Our land is full of treasure. I want to tell you tonight that the people are just like the land. That there is treasure inside us. And the pressure that we are under, the problems and the challenge and the struggles are not designed to defeat us or destroy us. They will only release the good thing that's inside us. Hallelujah. Now, 1 Samuel 30 and 1 says, Then it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had made a raid on the Nezheb, the north country, and on Ziklag, and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. They took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone. And carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Now David's two wives had been taken, Ahinoam the Jesuitite and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. Moreover, listen to this, moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one, because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Tap somebody and say, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you can't wait on somebody else to do it. You just got to tell yourself it's going to be okay. <laughs> David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to him, pursue. Somebody shout, pursue. pursue. Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. Father, thank you for the reading of the scripture. We pray that your word will open up to our hearts, and that we will never be the same after we hear your word. We declare it to be true by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to find somebody, grab their hand, and say, we will pursue and recover everything. Come on, find somebody else, say, we will pursue and recover everything. Look at someone in the eyes and tell them everything the devil has stolen from us. We are getting it back in Jesus' name. If you believe that, clap your hands like you believe it. So, brothers and sisters, here's the story. It's simple. David is leading a band of men. He has not become the official king yet, but he is the leader, and men look to him as the leader. And so David is out fighting with his men, and while he's away, the Amalekites slip into Ziklag where they were encamped with, with their wives and their children. And they destroy the city with fire, and they kidnap all of their children and all of their wives. When they arrive back to camp, everyone is gone. Everyone is taken. And the men begin to weep as if they could cry no more. Can I, how many men here, wave at me if you're a man. If you've got to think about it, don't worry about it. But I want you to know that in the day that we live in, that God is going to raise up real men, men that will cry and pray and believe God for revival. God is going to do that in these last days. And so these men began to cry, and they wept, and they were embittered. But the Bible says that David too was discouraged. 
but he encouraged himself. He wasn't sure exactly what to do. So he called for Abiathar and Ahimelech, the priest, to come. And he inquired of the Lord and said, Lord, what do I do? The Lord said, you will pursue them and you will recover everything that they've stolen from you. And so once David had a word from the Lord, he says, that's what we'll do. We'll go after them. He goes after them, he and his men. He finds the wives and the children. They've all been kidnapped by the Amalekites. But listen to this. The Amalekites were strong enough to kidnap them, but God didn't let them kill one single person. Because there are times in our lives that God may allow something to be taken. But because He is the God of resurrection, even the thing that is taken, God can raise it back up again. Even the thing that the enemy feels he's stolen from us that we feel we'll never get back. I came as your brother from America to remind you tonight that we have a God of recovery who works on our behalf. And he will help us to recover everything that we've lost. Now, let me talk to you for a moment about Ziklag. I know you are people that love the word and you love to be taught. So I want to spend a moment talking about Ziklag. Ziklag was known for two things. Ziklag was a place where metal was created. It was one of the first places where in ancient days iron ore was taken and it was fashioned into metal. Where sheep metal was made and even the metal for weapons was created in Ziklag. It was a place where there was a lot of fire because how many of you know it takes fire to work with metal? It was a place of a lot of pressure because it takes pressure in order to work with metal. Matter of fact, the Bible teaches us that God oftentimes, He takes us like silver and gold through the refiner's fire because it is in the fire that we come for pure. He allows us in moments and seasons of our lives to face a ziklag type of pressure. And under that pressure, God reaches inside you and He grabs that, that silver and He grabs that gold that's been hidden before because you never know what kind of woman you are are until you are a woman under pressure. You never know what kind of man you are until you are a man under pressure. But in the moments of pressure, when you can still lift your hand and say, God, I love you and I will praise you. In the moments of pressure, when you can still sing a song, when you can still dance, some of you tonight were dancing. Everything is not well. All things are not right. You're facing some things, but tonight you danced in faith. Tonight you worshiped in faith. Tonight you prayed him in faith. And in that moment, God takes the silver and the gold, purifies it, and brings it forth. Because I want you to know that when it's all said and done, God's going to recover everything in your life. So Ziklag represents this place where, where there is much refining going on. And we all live in these places of refinement. Don't think for a moment that even in America is not a place for refinement. If you've been watching the scene in America and the folks that are running for president, then you know that America needs God like never before. As a matter of fact, I'm prophesying to some of you, God will raise some of you up as missionaries and send you to America to get your brothers and sisters saved and delivered. Because, listen, I want you to understand, do not believe the hype. America needs God just like Africa and Russia and China and everywhere else. As a matter of fact, in Africa, the church is moving. The church is growing. In America, the church is going down. We need the prayers of African men and women to pray that the God of Africa would rise up in America and bring us back to our senses. It's the reason why. Hear me and hear me well. The reason I am not angry at slave owners or slave sellers. They were wrong, but I'm not angry at them. They were wrong, but I don't want to kill them. They were wrong, but I'm not, I'm, but I, I don't hate them. Here's why. Because no matter what men do, God is always in charge. God is sovereign and he runs everything. So even though men who were evil 
stole us from you and sent us somewhere else. But it was God's way of saying, I must take the strong spirit that I have in Africa and send it to Europe and America and Canada and all over the world because in the last days I will raise up people of color and they will bring revival in the land. And the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And God will redeem all men, not just black men, but white men men and yellow men and brown men will be redeemed because black men decided that we serve the Lord Jesus Christ and none other. So in the midst of pressure, God raises us up. He does it. In the middle of fire, God raises us up. And so these men who were with David, they needed to know what to do. How many of you all just need God to tell you what to do? How many of you are here? You'll do it if God will lead you. You, you've got the courage to go if God will give you a word. I want to tell you that once God gives you a word, that's all you need to go forward. When you hear God's word and he speaks it over your life, then all you need to do is have the courage to obey it. So David goes to God and says, God, what do I do? God says, you will pursue them and you will recover everything that's been lost. So what does he do? He goes after those who had robbed him of wives and children. Now, how many of you know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. That's where our fight is. Our fight is not with other human beings. Our fight is with demonic spirits and powers that rule in the air. Tap your neighbor and say, you're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. No, no, no. You're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. You may not like me, but you're still not my enemy. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so when David gets a word from God that you'll pursue and recover all, now he must go in that word and head to the place where the captives have been taken so that he can recover everyone that's been stolen by the Amalekites. On his way there, you see, can I tell you this? That if you're going to be successful in God, you need inside information. You need to know some stuff that everybody else doesn't know. Can I tell you some of the stuff that you know that everybody on the street doesn't know? You know that the Holy Spirit can lead you into all knowledge and into all truth. You know that. Can I tell you something else you know that everybody else doesn't know? You know that our God never loses. He always wins. Can I tell you some more inside information you need? You need to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. And when you declare that name, demons flee at the mention of that name. Can I give you more inside information? You need to know that God will provide everything that you need. He will make ways, open doors, take care of your tuition, your money for books, whatever you got to have. He'll make a way for you. You have to know that in your spirit. You've got inside information. When God tells you to pursue, He then educates you so that you know how to pursue. So he puts you in a church, puts you under a leader. No Christian should be out here by themselves. Every Christian ought to be in church learning from a man of God or a woman of God. Because it is in instruction that we get inside information so that we can go out of these walls and do battle and get victory over every enemy that comes against us. But God takes us under his wings and he instructs us. Listen, never allow yourself to become so prideful that no one can teach you. Never allow yourself to feel you know so much that no one can instruct you. So even if God sends a, a little black man from America who's originally from Africa, you still got to learn because none of us know so much that someone cannot teach us something. And it is in our ability to learn and to open our hearts and grow and develop in God's Word that we get inside information. So that where there have been losses in our lives and the enemy has robbed us and stolen from us, God gives us insight so that throughout the process of your life, can I tell you that you don't win everything back in one week? 
You don't win everything back in one month. How do you, how do you say month in Ugandan? I've forgotten my language. Mwezi. Did I say it right? Mwezi. That's month. What's week? It's week. Oh, that's easy. I got it. My Ugandan is perfect. Week. You don't get it all back in one week. You don't get it all back in one Wednesday. What is year? Mwak? Mwaka. Did I say it right? Listen, tell me. Don't play me. Tell me the truth. Did I say it? Mwaka. You don't get it all back in one week. You don't get it all back in one Wednesday. You don't get it all back in one Mwaka. You got to keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. Once after once, you must fight and fight and fight and fight until God returns it all. And He will do it. He will recover everything. But throughout the process of your life, you come and you become a part of an arrow. And God starts to speak to you. Well, you've only been here for a month or two or a year. You don't know it all. You stay. You learn. You grow. You take every class. You take all the training. You go through the Bible college. You do everything you can because that's the way God instructs you. So when the day comes for recovery, you are ready to recover everything that the enemy has stolen from you. You're able to go toe-to-toe, eye-to-eye with the enemy and tell the enemy, no, you will not destroy my family. You will not destroy my children. You will not destroy my marriage. You will not destroy my family. You will not destroy me because I have inside information. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. And I will pursue and I will recover everything. So David takes his troops. They get a little inside information on the way. They meet an Egyptian, a young Egyptian. And in the process of talking to the young Egyptian, they find that the young Egyptian is actually a slave to the Amalekites, their enemy. So the young Egyptian knows exactly where they are. Now, the Egyptians were enemies To the Israelites. So here God sends David's old enemy with the information that he needs to defeat his current enemy. Can I tell you that some of the things that you went through in your past were designed to teach you so that now today you have knowledge that you would not have had before. Don't be, listen to me closely. And as former slaves, this is, this is easy for me to say as a former slave. Don't be angry about what happened in the past. Because what happens in your past gets you ready for your future. And so... Rather than David being angry with the Egyptian, oh, you're the one that enslaved us, you're the one that stopped us. No, no. He listens to the young Egyptian boy, and the young Egyptian tells him everything he needs to know. And the young Egyptian is very smart. He's from North Africa. He's a smart guy. He says, I'll tell you if you promise that you won't hurt me, and you'll take good care of me. He says, I give you my word. I will care for you, I will watch over you, and no harm will come to you. None whatsoever. Can I stop here and say this? If there is anybody in your past or in your present that you have not forgiven, tonight is the night to get that straight. If you're holding something against anyone, if there's a little bit of a grudge or a little bit of a pain, or maybe they didn't pay you back the money they owed, or maybe they didn't give you what they should have given you, or maybe they didn't do what they said they were going to do, you cannot hold that against them. Because your ability to release them brings ability for you to walk into what God has for your life.
And the day you're able to say no, even though even though the young man was an Egyptian, David was able to forgive him of being an Egyptian and say, listen, I need what you have. Tell me what I need to know, and I promise I will not hurt you. Understand that even where there's been breakdown in relationships, where there have been things that have been broken in your life, where people have hurt you, understand this, that it was God that kept you every step of the way. And so if God kept you in the middle of the hurt, then don't be angry with them any longer tonight. Let that go because God wants to heal your heart so that you don't miss what he's getting ready to do for you right now. So the Bible says they go into where the Amalekites were and when they got there, they fought them for 24 hours plus. They fought them from, from sundown to sundown the next day. But when they finished fighting, they had recovered every wife, every child, everything that had been stolen. They had recovered it all at the end of the fight. Can I say this to you tonight? What makes fighting worth it is knowing that at the end of the fight, God has a victory for you at the end of the fight. The reason it is called the good fight of faith is because we win. The reason it's called the good fight of faith is because God has victory for us. The reason it's called the good fight of faith is because in the middle of the fight, God is working for us and God is making ways for us. Thank you. God is making ways for us in the middle of the battle so that when the battle is over, we walk out with the victory that God intended for our lives. So, so can I say, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, but can I tell you this? David's enemies, the Amalekites, blessed him in more ways than they will ever know. He said, oh, I know you thought, oh, our, our American friend has lost his mind. He didn't mean to say that, but I did. David's enemies blessed him in ways he would have never been blessed if it had not been for them. Can I tell you? That your enemies have done more for you than your friends. Because you didn't really pray like you pray now until you ran into your enemies. Your enemies taught you how to pray. You didn't serve God the way you serve Him now till you ran into your enemies. Your enemies, some of you wouldn't be Christians, you wouldn't be saved today, but your enemies ran you to church. You found there was nowhere else to go. Your enemies have blessed you. They made you pray more. They made you more faithful. They made you study God's word. They made you stay in church. Matter of fact, some of you need to get thank you cards. Send them to your enemies and say, thank you for blessing me. Because I wouldn't be who I am today if it were not for you. Because God said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. And even though your enemies rise against you, but God will give you victory. And you get to dance your way home with the spoils of the victory, with the spoils of war, saying, God, thank you that we pursued and we have recovered everything, everything the enemy has stolen from us. Can you imagine the joy in Ziklag when David and his mighty men came walking back into town with all their wives, all their children, all their belongings? As a matter of fact, there were some people that were so tired, they couldn't even go in the fight with them. When they came back, they blessed them too. They bless everybody. You see, when you fight it out and get victory by pursuing, you'll not only have enough for you, but you'll have enough to share with folks who cannot fight for themselves. And if you in this church, because listen to me, there is revival in this house. There is a move of the Holy Ghost in this place. There is a manifestation of the Spirit of God in this place. But do not be angry at me when I tell you this. This move of God is not just for you. It starts in you, but it's for every man and every woman living in Kampala, living throughout Uganda, living throughout East Africa. What God is doing here is an explosion that is going to rock the entire world for the glory of God. God is doing it in you so that he can do it in the world. Come on, stand up with me. Start clapping and shouting and giving God praise for the manifestation of his grace. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, praise him. Give God glory. 
give God glory. Start thanking God for your enemies. The enemy of sickness made you trust God. The enemy of poverty made you believe in miracles. The enemy of disappointment taught you that you don't put your trust in man, but you put your trust in God. Your enemies have taught you that it may look like you lose, but at the end you still win. Your enemies taught you that. Thank God for your enemies. people of love and we will walk in the love of God and we will let God use us to reconcile the world back to himself yes we will church God will use us to reach the world for his glory and we'll start right here in our Jerusalem and from there Judea Samaria, and been to the uttermost parts of the earth. We receive the Holy Ghost in our Jerusalem. Kampala is our Jerusalem. Even though men would not agree, I declare that Kampala is our Jerusalem. It is our Jerusalem, our city of peace. Because the peace, the king, the prince of peace lives here. And because of that, we have a peace that's different from an external peace. And so we receive the Holy Ghost in our Jerusalem, in our city of peace, in our Kampala. Because the Holy Ghost is present here, just like he is in New York or Los Angeles or Dallas, Texas or Beijing, China. God is no respecter of persons and his spirit is moving here. Why? So that you and I can recover all and in that recovery become ambassadors who take this gospel everywhere we go and declare to a fallen world that our God has the ability to recover everything that's been lost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I didn't preach a long time this first time because I want you to like me. But if your pastor ever lets me come back, I'll go just a few minutes longer. But I wanted you to know tonight that I love you. And, and, and I want you to know that I've missed you. We've been apart far too long. And I praise our God for reuniting brothers and sisters, bringing us back together again. Would you bow your head with me? As I prepare to turn the service back to the hands of your illustrious pastor. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed if you're in the building. And you say, Bishop McBath, I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. Everyone's head bowed. Everyone's eye closed so no one feels self-conscious. But if you're here and you say, Bishop McBath, I'm not a Christian, but I'd like to become one. If you're here in the building, just lift your hand wherever you are. I'm not, I'm not saved, but I want to be. Just lift your hand. I see your hands. Just lift your hand. Everybody's praying. Just keep praying for a moment. There's hands all over the building. Hands all over the building. And Pastor will instruct you in exactly the process for you here in Fenero. But here, as your visiting brother, if you're here and you raised your hand and you said, I want to know the Lord as my Savior, right where you're standing, I want you just to say these words. And come on, church, let's say it with them. Lord Jesus, I need you. I open my heart. And I ask you to take over my life. I'm sorry for my sin. 
and ask for your forgiveness. Make me your child. In the name of Jesus. Just for just a moment. If you just bow your heads for a moment. Musicians, would you all play? If you just bow your head for just a moment. If you're in the building, you say, Bishop, I'm going to ask three or four questions. Number one, first question is, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's my desire. Just wave at me if you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hands. If you're here and you say, Bishop, I have some issues of forgiveness or, shall I say, unforgiveness, some resentment. I want the Lord to touch my heart tonight. Wave at me. Thank God for your honesty. Bishop, there are some things that until tonight, I had just said, well, the enemy stole that. It's gone. I'll never get it back. But after hearing the word pursue, I'm ready by faith to go after and recover what's been lost. Wave at me if that's you tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, here's what we know about our God. He doesn't just hear the bishop's prayer or the apostle's prayer. He hears all of us when we pray. So what we're going to do is every one of us, we're going to lift our hands and we're going to pray all at the same time. Pray in whatever language you want to pray in. You can, you can pray in your native language. You can, you can pray in Swahili. You can pray in English. You can pray in Spanish. You can pray in tongues. But I want you to open your mouth and start praying right now. I want you to start praying that people will let go of resentment. I want you to start praying that men and women be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to start praying for new courage for those that are ready to go after everything. I want you to start praying, 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 praying. That's it, church. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Pray, church. Pray, church. I just, just, come on. Pray, church. Pray, church. Pray, church. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pray, church. I don't want you to pray like Americans or Europeans. I want you to pray like Africans. I want you to pray like you know God's going to hear us. I want you to cry out to God. to pursue in the name of Jesus. Release men and women from resentment tonight. I break the stronghold of unforgiveness in the name of Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon those who desire Him. Come Holy Spirit. Fall fresh upon us. All of us need to be renewed in your spirit. So we all ask you, Lord, pour out your spirit afresh upon us. In the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. As your pastor comes, church, I say this to our churches all around the world, China, throughout Africa, Dominican Republic. Be who you are. Be the church in Uganda. Be the church in Africa. I know that because we all have access on our phones and our tablets to YouTube and church services and conferences all around the world. 
But I say to you as humbly as I know how, this is not the time for the African church to become like the American church. This is the time for the American church to become like the African church. Let God use you. Hold up a standard. Don't allow serving Jesus to be about possessions, to be about material things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And let God add all things to you. But don't make things the thing you pursue. But chase after God. Pursue him like never before. And as you pursue him, I promise you, God will meet every need. God will take care of you. God will raise us up as brothers and sisters. And he'll use us to reconcile the world to himself. We love you very much. Thank you for hearing us. Another hand clap for the bishop. <laughs> Somebody got 